Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sky Factory 1. I have done quite a bit of work off camera. In the last episode we set up this amazing cobblestone generator tier 1 uh, from the mod couple for days and we have gotten so much cobblestone it is amazing. We will never run out again. In fact we might have enough to be able to make the tier 2 but that is not the focus of today's episode. As you can see I'm growing spruce trees. But as you can probably also see, I have expanded the island and that is because I have done research. Because apparently there are things that I have done so inefficiently and we're gonna fix that. What I am currently trying to do is trying to make some more clay and I'm trying to remember what on earth or how what the recipe is for clay. Now, I, as I said, I've done a bunch of research and I remember now one of them is the iron wand or the wands here. These are really useful <laughs> and I'll show you in a moment. It's very easy to make an iron ingot or a stone or a wood uh, and sticks. So let us go ahead and make that right off the bat over here. We do in fact have some iron so I will be using that to make this iron wand. Perfect. And this is basically to help with building. So as you can see, I have cobblestone in my inventory and I could just place it down and it kind of just forms the shape that is currently there. Of course, if I do have enough uh, cobblestone in my inventory, but I can then vein mine this and boom, I now have a bunch of gravel so I can then place it down on the ground over here and I can, well, do this. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that just amazing? And with that I have a bunch of sand that I can turn that sand into dust, which is really, really handy. So what I want to do real quick is put some more water in here, turn these into clay, and then get these clay in turned into uh, clay balls, excuse me. And then I want to turn them into porcelain clay so I can make a so I basically can make another fired crucible because we will be needing some lava for today's episode but that is not the only things that I have discovered as you can see I have a bunch of stuff over here uh, ready to go first of which I want to make the feral lantern which is actually pretty easy to make and it basically places in for invisible lights so I don't have to spam down torches everywhere um, so it's gonna play it's gonna keep the place lit and it's gonna keep moths from spawning so I definitely want to go ahead and make that right off the bat so we can work and actually see what on earth we're doing. Uh, so I need glowstone, some gold, I should have everything, I have the glass, I also have the glowstone. I don't actually have enough gold. Alright, we will get back to the, uh, to, the, to the lantern in just a moment then. But I have discovered, and it was also told to me down below in the comments, which thank you for the feedback. But basically, if you didn't know, you can actually place these in a 3x3 three three area. If I set up a little bit of a demonstration area over here. 3x3 three three, and then place the mesh in. I only have 6 right now, we're waiting for that. But, if I then grab my dust, then we should see that we can actually sieve multi in multiple sieves at a time. This is huge. I've been using one sieve this whole time. And, well, this is so much more efficient. <laughs> So that is really cool and in fact I need to finish off this dust here because we need the gold in order to continue. But I've also discovered something else. We have what is called a click machine from the mod, well, click machine. And I thought this thing needed power to run, but apparently it does not. And we only need a few things to get started. So I'm gonna get some stuff cooking here because this click machine, what it basically does is, well, it does what the name says. It clicks, meaning we can actually kind of automate the sieving process. But not only that, we can also kind of automate this grinder right here, which is going to be really, really beneficial and really useful. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get the materials that we need for this. I'm going to grind up some ore pieces here and I'm going to set up the furnaces to smelt some of these uh, dust and whatnot. And then we should be able to kind of automate the sieving process, which I'm really excited about. Ah, we are under attack. This is why I need that feral lantern, because this is an issue. But we should be all right. What did I just get? Oh no, we have a creeper. We, we have a creeper. Okay, I need to sleep. We have a creeper on the island. This is, this is bad. All right, we can actually start getting some of the stuff made here for... I should probably go and take that guy out. Uh, we can start making the, uh, the click machine. So we need a redstone servo. 
And with that, we also need two tin ingots, which I should have. I do indeed. All right, then we just need a regular piston, which should be fairly easy to get like so. And then a chest. And with that, we should now be able to make the click machine itself. It's coming. <laughs> that kind of scared me. Uh, I was waiting for that to happen. All right, buddy. Please do not destroy my stuff. That would be very bad. Okay. Got it. Let's hurry up so we can get this feral lantern down. <laughs> All right, but the click machine, I should be able to break this, place it facing this way. And if I then go in here, we can up this to two clicks a second. Uh, powered by rainbow magic. Okay, awesome. Right clicking and then I can give it something to right click. If I then give it the gravel, it is now automatically saving the gravel as long as I feed it something savable in here into the actual click machine. The only issue right now though is as you can see we need to manually pick up the items. But there is a solution for that as well and that is this right here, basic item collector. But for that we kind of need obsidian and ender pearl, which the ender pearl is probably the most painful one out of all of them to get. But with that set though, it is definitely not impossible. But I do now have enough gold to grind down this gold chunk, which will result in me getting two gold dust, which I can then smelt, and then I can get two gold ingots, and then we can make the feral lantern. Now, like I said, it isn't only for the sieves. We can also use it over here. If we take it over to the grinder and place it like this and then up it like so, as you can see, it is now grinding for us. Now, the important thing is you can't just have this on constantly. If we don't have anything in here to process, or if I just leave it like that, the handle will eventually pop off. But as soon as, as long as we're close by and always like monitoring it and working with it, then we will be all right. But our gold is now done, which means I should be able to take the glass, the glowstone, and what else am I missing? I think that is it. That is everything we need for the Feral Flare Lantern. And where should we put this? I don't know where to put this. Um, I'm just gonna place it here for now. But when it becomes nighttime, we should see that this has an effect on the area. Now the next step in really setting up the sieve automation system that I really want, we need obsidian, but most importantly, we need ender pearls. Now the best thing for us to get ender pearls at the moment is from ender pearl dust. I need to set up a mob farm eventually. That will be in the very near future, hopefully. Um, but we can get ender pearl dust from crushed end stone. We get crushed end stone from end stone, and we can make end stone using glowstone on lava that is in a barrel which is why I have been making lava in these crucibles. I don't know why there's not lava in here. I guess I forgot to put in cobblestone. But so if I grab this lava and then put in some more cobblestone and place the lava like so, why can I not place it in? That's an issue, help. So it appears that my plan has been kind of ruined. I am not able to put lava in these uh, barrels, which I guess kind of makes sense. Uh, unfortunately, but yeah, I don't know. Oh, maybe I need a stone barrel. Do I potentially need a stone barrel? Yes. Okay. So you need a stone barrel in order to put the lava in. Okay. My plan has not been foiled just yet. <laughs> so with that, I should be able to either right click. Yes. Right click with glowstone and then I get end stone. Now using the end stone, I can crush it down into crushed end stone which when I sieve it has a 7% chance of dropping and end up old dust, but that is really all that we need. This uh, lava making process is a tiny bit slow, but it could be much worse. So if I now hammer these down, let's just, let's, let's just try and see what happens here, right? And sieve it. And we got a shulker shell, a vitalized seed planted on enriched vitalized soil, Chorus fruit, and that's it. But we did get some cool stuff, so that's all right. So I will just have to do that enough until we have what we need to make an ender pearl. Next, I really want to move this setup. So, uh, by you, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye. What is that? Is that a baby enderman? 
Enter Todd. Whoa! Hello, sir. Uh, okay. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Ow. Ow. Okay. <laughs> I was not prepared for that. I was not prepared for that. Hold on. Um, you is exactly what I need. Get over here. Nope. Yep. Yep. And eventually got him. Okay. I got another statue of me. Right. Well, unfortunately I didn't get an ender pearl. But hey. <laughs> I guess that's cool. So the feral uh, the feral flare lantern, as you can see, it reaches pretty far actually. It just doesn't reach right at the end there, which could be a problem. But it's fine. What I was gonna do was to remove these and this as well, let me think. I think leave that, put a double chest there, and then what I'll do is place a hopper facing into the chest, like so. I will now place, instead of one, I'll have two oak barrels, so it's actually gotta go twice as fast, and then hoppers pointing into that, and then a double chest on top of that. That should be more efficient, because then we have two barrels, and then we have a double chest down here for all of our dirt, just like that. And our new lava has turned, meaning I can then turn it into endstone dust. And we can try and sieve some more crushed endstone and see what we get. And nothing of what we need. But that is quite alright. It is time to try and set up this little system that I have in mind. So I'm thinking if I remove the floor right here, leave a 3x3 area, and then I can place the sieves right here, and I don't think I can fall through once there's mesh on. Yep. It's safe, I think. <laughs> what I can then do is I will have the clicker, I think, I'll have it right there. I was originally thinking of having three sieve setups, which we will probably want in the future, but for right now, I think this is going to be serving our purpose just fine. The tricky part though will be to get rid of that, uh, place, no, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do, I didn't even know that was possible. That'll do. Then if I have the click machine, I go down and place it there. Yep, perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. And then we go here. And there, all right, and then we increase that to two clicks. Then I place a wooden hopper on top. And actually, I think, I think that hopper might actually be able to go on the side. I guess we'll find out. If so, that would make this thing look very, very neat. All right, there we go. And that should, I really hope that items don't fall underneath the sieves. I'm just gonna count on that it doesn't. If it does, we will just have to go down there and place some slabs right under them, which I might do anyway, because it's gonna look better. And there's another creeper. Yeah, don't blow up. Go away. Okay, got it. Whoa. Don't scare me. <laughs> I guess they give me life or something, I don't know. I want to make another click machine though, so let's go ahead and quickly do that. Because, like I said, we can have one for the crusher, the grinder over here, which I really do want. And there we go, that's everything we need for yet another click machine. I will be placing the grinder right here, so that means I will need to do that water trick again. And I just realized I need the clicker up here by the handle. <laughs> Not on the grinder block itself. Nope. Uh, well, this is another good demonstration for the wand. If I place down a 5x3 wall right here of cobblestone, and then I grab my iron wand, build a bunch, and then I can just vein mine all of these, and I have now... A stack and a half of gravel, and I can auto sieve it. <laughs> Look at that. That is seriously cool, and we got diamonds. We got our first diamond right here. That is awesome, and this is what I needed. Nice. 
And another diamond. Wow. All right. Another click machine has been made. And I think I'm happy with this setup now because instead of the other system before, we now have this, which is going to be better. Not as pretty, but it'll get the job done. Yes, I can. So I can turn this machine off and off using a lever. That is awesome. I'm very happy with this setup. Speaking of setup, I think we are getting to the point where we need to move our storage a little bit because this is getting a little bit cramped. I will want to set up a proper storage system very, very soon, which in fact, now that we have this set up right here, it will probably be one of the things we look at in the next episode because yeah, I really, really need a storage system better than this because these chests are getting way too full. <gasps> we actually got an enderpearl dust. We got an enderpearl dust. We can use this if we smelt it to get an enderpearl. Awesome. I was really hoping for that. Okay. That's amazing. Now all we need is basically obsidian, which should be fairly easy to make. So if I have lava and I put uh, water on top of it, I should be able to do this. Here is our enderpearl. Now I just need to get the obsidian that we need. And this is something I want to move these as well, because I do not like the way they are at the moment. I am also going to extend this grind setup over here with a chest with a hopper leading into it so that I can put multiple things in it at a time. Apparently that doesn't work. Huh. I find that a little bit odd. If I won't be able to use a hopper to insert into it, will it then not be able to extract? No. Huh. But okay, I guess... I guess we just can't do that. Okay. Hey, it's better than nothing, right? All right, we now have lava. So, if I understand the recipe correctly, have lava in a barrel and then put water on top of it. So... Obviously, we will need to do this over here with the stone barrel. So place in lava, place water on top. And there we go. We got obsidian. That actually wasn't too bad. Now I just need four pieces of obsidian. And I will really quickly cover up these torches just so something bad doesn't happen. I do not want to lose them. And there we go. We are just two obsidian out of being able to get what I want. And I'm actually gonna, I'm, I'm gonna waste a little bit of lava here, but I'm going to move these over to the new place over here. There we go, that should work the same. And now the torch is, I think the least uh, effective way you could actually use these crucibles. Having fire or something like that, lava underneath is going to be a lot better, but for now, this works for our usage. Now, another thing that I really quickly want to set up, which really shouldn't take long, is actually to move this table over here because we do have Tinker's uh, construct in here, which I absolutely love that mod. And I haven't really been using it to its full potential here, unfortunately. So I think it is time that I set up some of the tables for it, such as the Tinker Station and the Pot Builder also kind of want the pot chest. So now this means I will be able to make certain things in here from within the Tinker station, which is really cool. Got to make a few more patterns just so they're so just so that they're there. There we go. So I'm going to throw out these. I know there won't be much of a difference. But if I look at the recipe here for a pickaxe, we need a pickaxe head, tool handle and tool binding. So pickaxe head and I can do tool binding and tool handle. Now I know depending on there are a bunch of different uh, combinations you can do. So like I could do the handle out of wood, I could do the binding out of a different material. But in order to do that, I need to get some of the, some of the guidebooks because I do not remember 
<laughs> each the uh, all the different combinations in my head. So I need to get these. I believe I have materials that you. I also need puny smelting, mighty smelting, tinkers, gadgetry, fantastic foundry, and then eventually we'll be able to make the encyclopedia of tinkering. So far, I only have materials and you which might have some of the standards or that might have some of the materials. In fact, it does. So flint, so you can see there's different durabilities depending on what stuff you do. So we might have been able to make a different pickaxe. If we combine, if we take a look at the flint uh, pickaxe head, for example, so the durability is 85 and the mining speed is 3.5. So if we go ahead and look at a at the bone or at the stone, for example, we have the durability of 150 and the mining speed of four. So yeah, stone is pretty much the the best thing I think we could have taken in this scenario until, of course, we get to the more advanced stuff, which I do want to get into Tinker's Construct pretty soon, which is why I have the grout here selected because I want to start making that so we can set up a smeltery fairly soon. Now, while I'm waiting for the lava to smelt, I'm just going to go ahead and... Well, excavate a bunch of this cobblestone. If my wand didn't break, that would be nice. In fact, you know what? Just because we can, I'm going to make a diamond wand. It might seem a, like a little bit of a waste, but honestly, we did just get three diamonds from a little bit of gravel before. So honestly, it's not that bad. Now, again, we will be able to set up a much more advanced and automated setup than having to do this by hand, but that is later in the future and now my hammer is broken, of course. And the lava is done, so now we can get, we can finally get the final pieces of obsidian that we need. Okay, not breaking anything. That is good. All right, there we go. And there we go, the fourth piece of obsidian. So with this, I will be able to now make the, if I can click, basic item collector. Now, I will be showing you how this works right now, in fact. So if I place this down on top of here, if I look at this, you can see there is a box right here. And anything inside that box, if I throw that, will get picked up and it will automatically put the item down in the thing below it. So I can also increase the range if I wanted to. So... I can increase the range in that direction, which I do want to do. So I can also decrease the range. And as you can see, I moved the line back there over. So yeah, I want to increase the, load, the range. So we include this area in case an item drops here. But yeah, that should be pretty good. Actually, I'm, it might be fine at a three. I think it might be fine at a three, actually. But this is now going to automatically pick up items and make it put it into this chest. And you know what might actually look better? is if we go ahead and place a wooden hopper and then place the basic item collector on top of that wooden hopper. That might look a little bit better. So I think that is pretty good. Now again, unfortunately, the only thing that is not automated is me having to do this bit by hand. But again, it's not too big of a deal and we will be able to set something up for it pretty soon in the near future. But because I have these wands now and the diamond hammer, Doing this <laughs> is pretty easy. So I can just go ahead and say boop. And we should be able to see all the items don't appear in the world. Well, they do until they get picked up and then put into this chest right here. And there we go. So guys, as I am on the top of my cobblestone pillar, that is going to conclude today's episode. We have done a lot of progress today, and I really hope you have enjoyed this episode. If you did, please be sure to leave it a like and subscribe if you're new. And yeah, I was afraid of that. That is, That was my concern. Uh, so we will increase the uh, the range here by one so we make sure that we get all of it but yeah we got a lot of progress done today i still need to figure out what i want to do with the island because currently i'm just using oak fences with oak slabs i want to make it more interesting so i will be thinking about that and i think in the next episode we are possibly going to be taking a look at refined stories because this story is right here it, it, it's just it's ew it's disgusting to look at so yeah we need to be able to make some stuff but what i'm going to do is I will be bookmarking the stuff that we need in between episodes, but I will also 
be saving a bunch of items so that we have a bunch of resources to work with in the next episode. I definitely also want to start setting up a Tinker Spell Tree, though I don't know if we will be doing that next episode because I also want to make a mob farm, which really should have high priority because we need some mob drops. So yeah, next episode probably storage and uh, maybe a mob farm if we can manage. But yeah, that's going to be for this episode. Really hope you have enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day and... Goodbye.